A wormhole is a hypothetical tunnel connecting two different points in space-time in such a way that a trip through the wormhole could take much less time than a journey between the same starting and ending points in normal space. The ends of a wormhole could in theory connect two different points in the same universe or serve as a passageway between different universes. Wormholes come about as solutions to the equations of Einstein's general theory of relativity. In fact, they crop up so readily in this way that some theorists are encouraged to think that real counterparts may eventually be found or fabricated and perhaps used for high-speed travel through space and time. However, a known property of wormholes is that they're highly unstable and would probably collapse instantly if even the tiniest amount of matter, such as a single atom, attempted to pass through them. A possible way around this problem is the use of exotic matter to prevent the wormhole from pinching off. The theory of wormholes goes back to 1916, shortly after Einstein published his general theory, when Ludwig Flamm, an obscure Austrian physicist, looked at the simplest possible solution of Einstein's field equations, known as the Schwarzschild solution. This describes the gravitational field around a spherically symmetric, non-rotating mass. If the mass is sufficiently compact, the solution describes a particular form of the phenomenon now known as a black hole, the Schwarzschild black hole. Flamm realized that Einstein's equations allowed a second solution now known as a white hole and that the two solutions describing two different regions of space-time were connected, mathematically at least, by a space-time conduit. Because the theory has nothing to say about where these regions of space-time might be in the real world, the black hole entrance and white hole exit could be in different parts of the same universe or in entirely different universes. In 1935, Einstein and Nathan Rosen further explored the theory of intra- and inter-universe connections in a paper whose actual purpose was to try to explain fundamental particles, such as electrons, in terms of space-time tunnels threaded by electric lines of force. Their work gave rise to the formal name Einstein-Rosen Bridge, for what the physicist John Wheeler would later call a wormhole. Incidentally, Wheeler also coined the terms black hole and quantum foam. Wheeler's 1955 paper discussed wormholes in terms of topological entities called geons and provided the first diagram of a wormhole as a tunnel connecting two openings in different regions of space-time. Interest in so-called traversable wormholes gathered pace following the publication in 1987 of a paper by Michael Morris, Kip Thorne and Yuri Yurtseva, MTY, at Caltech. The paper stemmed from an inquiry to Thorne by Carl Sagan, who was mulling over a way of conveying the heroine in his novel Contact across interstellar distances at translight speed. Thorne gave the problem to his PhD students, Morris and Yurtseva, who realized that such a journey might be possible if a wormhole could be held open long enough for a spacecraft or any other object to pass through. MTY concluded that to keep a wormhole open would require matter with a negative energy density and a large negative pressure. Such hypothetical matter is known as exotic matter. Although the existence of exotic matter is speculative, a way is known of producing negative energy density, the Casimir effect. As a source for their wormhole, MTY turned to the quantum foam. Empty space, at the smallest scale it turns out, isn't empty at all but seething with violent fluctuations in the geometry of space-time. At this level of nature, ultra-small wormholes are believed to continuously wink into and out of existence. MTY suggested that a sufficiently advanced civilization could expand one of these tiny wormholes to macroscopic size by adding energy. Then the wormhole could be stabilized using the Casimir effect by placing two charged superconducting spheres 
in the wormhole mouths. Finally, the mouths could be transported to widely separated regions of space to provide a means of faster than light communication or travel. For example, a mouth placed on board a spaceship could be carried to some location many light years away. Because this initial trip would be through normal spacetime, it would have to take place at sublight speeds. But during the trip and afterwards, instantaneous communication and transport through the wormhole would be possible. The ship could even be supplied with fuel and provisions through the mouth it was carrying. Also, thanks to relativistic time dilation, the journey needn't take long, even as measured by Earth-based observers. If a fast starship carrying a wormhole mouth were to travel, say, to the star Vega, 25 light years away, at 99.995% of the speed of light, shipboard clocks would measure the journey as taking just three months. But the wormhole stretching from the ship to Earth directly links the space and time between both mouths, the one in the ship and the one left behind on or near Earth. Therefore, as measured by Earth-bound clocks too, the trip would have taken only three months, three months to establish a more or less instantaneous transport and communications link between here and Vega. Of course, the MTY scheme isn't without technical difficulties, one of which is that the incredibly powerful forces needed to hold the wormhole mouths open might tear apart anything or anyone that tried to pass through. In an attempt to design a more benign environment for travelers using a wormhole, Matt Visser of Washington University in St. Louis conceived an arrangement in which the space-time region of a wormhole mouth is flat and therefore force-free, but is framed by struts of exotic matter that contain a region of very sharp curvature. Visser envisaged a cubic design with flat space wormhole connections on the square sides and cubic strings as the edges. Each cube face might connect to the face of another wormhole mouth cube, or the six cube faces might connect to six different cube faces in six separated locations. Given that our technology isn't yet up to the task of building a wormhole subway, the question arises as to whether they might already exist. One possibility is that advanced races elsewhere in the galaxy or beyond have already set up a network of wormholes that we could learn to use. Another is that wormholes might occur naturally. David Hochberg and Thomas Kephart of Vanderbilt University have discovered that in the earliest moments of the universe, gravity itself may have given rise to regions of negative energy in which natural, self-stabilizing wormholes may have formed. Such wormholes created in the Big Bang might be around today, spanning small or vast distances in space. <laughs>